included companies working in the oil sector. Seven warnings came from general retailers and six were travel and leisure businesses. On average, share prices tumbled by almost 14% after a profit warning. I think the thing to remember about a profit warning is it's really the board having to explain to the market that they maybe got it wrong. Maybe their views of the outcomes for the future year are not where they thought they were going to be. So in that regard, the fact we're in a more volatile world makes the likelihood of that more, more frequent, more likely to occur. And most of that volatility stems from a slowdown in China. If the world's second biggest economy isn't building or buying as much, the rest of the world feels it. The world economy may have issues, but things are looking positive for the British economy. GDP is one of the fastest in Europe. Unemployment is at a near record low, whilst employment is at a record high. But Britain won't be immune from a major global slowdown, which these profit warnings may be signalling. Joe Lynham, BBC News. Let's get some more now on the story. We mentioned that state schools in England will have to give their pupils more information about alternatives to university under a new law to be brought in later this year. That uh, came from the Education Secretary, Nikki Morgan. And uh, with me now is Dan Kirkby from the charity SEMCA. Thank you very much indeed. SEMTA, I should say. I'm sorry. Uh, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Um, presumably, you welcome this move. We are over the moon. SEMTA and its sister organisation, EAL, has been campaigning tirelessly for years and years and years to actually overcome some of the major hurdles that still exist in terms of parents and educators knowing enough about vocational training to put people in the right, in the right path, on the right path to a great, rewarding career. Nikki Morgan, the Education Secretary, has talked about ending the outdated snobbery, and there has been that attitude for a long time, hasn't there, that schools should be gearing up and should be gearing their pupils up for going to university? I think certainly people of my generation were always told you have to go to university to make <clears throat> something of yourself. That's behind the times now. The new young achievers of this country are in fact people that have gone to a vocational training course, to an apprenticeship, to university to learn engineering for instance, and they become uh, one of the, the great achievers of the 21st century and we need many many more we as a nation became great because of uh, apprenticeships and because of engineering and we need to remain great by putting more and more young people through this incredibly good system it works although there is still a lot of evidence that graduates get a lot of the best jobs get a lot of the best paid jobs um, shouldn't we isn't there a danger in saying to people don't worry about university, look at something else. I don't think so. I think what we're asking for is people are given enough information to make an informed choice. Earning and learning with an apprenticeship is a very valid way forward for many. And if you look at young people now leaving university with a degree which might not guarantee them a job, they are 30, 40, 50,000 pounds in debt with no job to go to. If you take on an apprenticeship, our research shows that two or three years after finishing learning, you're earning 24 to 30,000 pounds a year. And you're probably going to be 80,000 pounds better off than some of your peers who haven't gone, that, uh, gone down that route. Is this something of uh, a backlash almost against those many years when we were told since the Blair government was in power, we want more people to go to university, more and more pupils were encouraged to go? And, of course, an awful lot of graduates then find that they can't get jobs. Absolutely. And there's so many people out there now who are sort of scratching their heads wondering what went wrong. They might have good degrees from good universities in a, an extraordinary number of subjects, but they can't actually get work. Engineers, we are crying out in this country for engineers. Engineering and advanced manufacturing produces 10% of the GDP. We need something like 800,000 new engineers by 2020. And the government has committed to producing 3 million more apprenticeships by, by the end of the Parliament. And we at Semtra and EAL are actually doing as much as we can to work with the educators, industry and government to make that happen. Okay. Dan Kirkby, thank you very much indeed for coming in to talk to us. Now, let's catch up with the weather prospects. We've been seeing an awful lot about what it's like uh, across the other side of the Atlantic. Ben Rich is going to tell us what it's like closer to home as well. Yes, uh, thank you, Carol. It is far too mild for snow here. A week ago, actually, some of us still had snow on the ground this time uh, last Sunday, but uh, for today, none of that. Temperatures up to 15, even 16 degrees in places. With that, though, there has been a lot of cloud, as you can see from the satellite picture. Just a few breaks here and there, but across the southwest, notice this nice break in the cloud just creeping in now across parts of Cornwall. And across the southwest, I think that is going to give quite a bright end to the afternoon. Elsewhere, quite a lot of cloud, the odd spot of drizzle. And then as we go through the sea, 
evening and tonight. We will see some clear spells across England and Wales, but despite that, not a cold night. So only down to 9 or 10 degrees for Northern Ireland, for parts of Western Scotland. More cloud here, some outbreaks of patchy rain at times. And we will continue to see some outbreaks of rain in western areas through the day tomorrow. It's quite heavy bursts at times. Brighter skies further east, and eventually I think we'll see some brighter skies.